The Next Life, the 64th Big Finish Main Range Doctor Who release, first released in six parts, Grossilian Download, in December of 2004, and written by Alan Barnes and Gary Russell. This is also the final story in the Divergent saga of Doctor Who, and it's also technically the final story to have Paul McGann as the incumbent Doctor. Now, he would appear in more Big Finish stories along along the kind of timeline, but by his next story, Terra Firma, uh, Doctor Who was back on TV, Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant were going through the motions, so yeah, this is the final story in which Paul McGann was the incumbent Doctor. Now, the Eighth Doctor, voiced by Paul McGann, and his companions, Charlie Pollard, voiced by India Fisher, and Keris, voiced by Conrad Westmus, They've just gone the TARDIS back, or so it seems, and they're kind of making an attempt to go out and explore this new universe, or what they know of it, when something causes the TARDIS to once again crash land back on Bortrasoy, and it seems at first as though people are killed in the explosion, or killed in the crash. However, it's soon revealed that they have actually all survived. The Doctor ends up in a kind of mysterious jungle on the planet, and ends up joining a group of people in order to try and find their way to the center and ultimately find a way off. Including, including this group are a man named Dakar Keep, voiced by Stefan Cornicard, and a woman named Perfection, or Dub Perfection, played by Daphne Ashbrook. Now this is actually one of two returning characters, well not characters, actresses in this Doctor Who story with Daphne Ashbrook and the other being Annika Wills, who I'll get to in a minute. Daphne Ashbrook previously played Grace Holloway in Doctor Who the movie in 1996. So he's going to join this party, but then it's revealed that he and Perfection are going to have to run because uh, Keep plans to kind of hunt them down. Meanwhile with Charlie and Keris, both of them end up in a situation where they end up talking with people who they presumed were dead, and so they assume, okay, this is... I've... I was fatally wounded in the crash, so now this is my consciousness kind of allowing me to forget or accept everything that's happened in my life, with uh, Keris encountering once again his wife Lida, voiced by Jane Hills, who he of course had to kill back in the Creed of the Cromon. And Charlie ends up talking to what she assumes is a kind of ghostly version of her mother, Louisa Pollard, voiced by Annika Wills. Now, Annika Wills previously appeared in Doctor Who back in the 60s, where she played companion Polly Wright. So, once again, with her and Daphne Ashbrook, while they're not playing the same characters, it's nice to have them back in a Doctor Who production. And Louisa kind of helps Charlie talk through her adventures with the Doctor and talk through her feelings, including her slight guilt over taking over the life of Simon Munchford. He was the R01 kind of crew member who she had impersonated in order to get on board the R101. He's voiced by Stephen Mansfield. And she has to kind of come to terms with the things that she's done, the things she's seen, and ultimately find a way to kind of get over them. But then it's revealed what's really going on. They're, these are kind of visions are being over, are being engineered and overseen by the Croker, voiced once again by Stephen Perring, and Rassilon, voiced by Don Warrington. Now, um, everyone has survived, they're on the planet Bortrasoy, eventually all reunited, but then Rassilon and the Croker are planning kind of a big event in order to allow them to escape Bortrasoy. Because they say at the end of everything that the kind of final checkpoint is a way for the Doctor, Charlie and Keris to leave this particular universe and get the Divergent universe and get back to their own one. The way out, so to speak. But then, uh, well... Travesties happen, and ultimately they have to find a way to stop it. Now, I did, I did wonder at some point in this story whether this was supposed to be like Doctor Who's answer to Star Trek V: The Final Frontier. I mean, with the story 
titled The Next Life, part of me did wonder that, because Doctor Who has parodied Star Trek before in Big Finish. I mean, they did so with Bang Bang a Boom, which was partially parodying Star Trek. So with the cover that they presented, plus the title The Next Life, part of me was wondering, okay, is this supposed to be referencing The Final Frontier? But I don't think it is. But also they do manage to incorporate a lot of the kind of previous divergent stories, as well as other stories. I mean, it's revealed at the end that Daphne Ashbrook's character, Perfection, Charlie really comes to not like her, and only because Perfection is shown as, like, the perfect companion for the Doctor, and Charlie gets more and more aggravated as things go on. But then it's eventually revealed that Perfection is actually sort of like a version of Zagreus, Zagreus sits inside your head, Zagreus sits among the dead, Zagreus sees you in your bed and eats you when you're sleeping. You remember that? Well, it's been thought of that very early on Zagreus was able to separate from the Doctor, as was supposed to be, and now is in this form, and she ends up teaming up with the car keep to stop Croker and Rassilon's plan of trying to escape back to the universe, and actually setting Croker and Rassilon back in a situation very similar to Sherzo. Like the Doctor and Charlie were in Sherzo, they do go and manage to set them back at that, but then the Doctor and Keris and Charlie ultimately realise the deception that's going on and manage to escape themselves, while Keep and Perfection manage have to kind of start their timeline all over again. Ultimately, this is a very difficult story to describe because it it does go on rather on a bit. I mean, compared to other stories which were only four parts long, this is six parts, and each part's about half an hour long. But at the same time, it, is, it does feel like an appropriate big end to the Divergent saga. But I also do like how, when it comes to the end of this particular story, it's not like a happily ever after. Well, it is, but not entirely, because it does end on a cliffhanger leading into the next Eighth Doctor, a big story in this timeline, which is Terra Firma. As the Doctor, Charlie and Keris are able to escape, they are able to get the TARDIS back and they travel back to our universe, the main universe, and find themselves in a dark room. Which, okay, not too bad. They open up a door looking for some light and then find themselves surrounded by Daleks, as well as Davros, voiced once again by Terry Malloy. So, honestly, that feels to me like a great cliffhanger to end the Divergent series on, and I can't wait to listen to the next 8th Doctor Big Finish story, Terra Firma, just to see how they get out of that one. But, for what it was, I thought The Next Life was a really cool story. As I said, it's not really my favourite of the Divergent story. I think my favourite would still be Sherzo, purely because of how abstract it was. But I think... The next life for me comes into number two. I think my top three would be something like uh, Sherzo, The Next Life, and then I think my f next favorite of that was Kedroya. Something like that. But anyway, let, let me know your thoughts on what The Next Life was like for you. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Are you, do, do you like this story? Do you feel it's a bit overstuffed? Let me know down below. Anyway, until I get to Terra of Herma, see ya.